Hi everyone, Dennis Foley from Acoustic Fields. Today we're going to talk about sound diffusion. We get a lot of questions about uh, diffusion. It's one of the four main uh, room distortions that we always discuss and people that experience diffusion for the first time are just completely, uh, their musical experience has changed and uh, we're going to be doing a whole series of videos with Bruce uh, Halberg, one of our customers who's uh, made a big commitment to diffusion and um, we're going to uh, talk about uh, his discoveries in sound. He calls me every night and tells me uh, how much it's changed so it's uh, going to be an interesting video. How a sound diffuser works. There's a lot of devices on the marketplace in the marketplace that call themselves diffusers. I even saw some foam the other day that said it was a diffuser. It's just simply not true. These are uh, marketing uh, names given to products. Uh, those of us in, in the business understand how diffusion works and a quadratic diffuser is a true diffuser. We've all seen these uh, quadratic diffusers around. Maybe not quite knew, know how they uh, work or understood the, the function, but we'll, we'll talk about that today. Quadratic diffusers based on prime numbers. Three, five, seven, nine, eleven. These are all examples of prime numbers. It's, it's a formula that you, you, you plug in uh, a constant and work through uh, the end and get residuals. A uh, little bit too complicated for this uh, video. But let's just talk about quadratic because it's the real true diffusion. It's the one we use because it's predictable and it's consistent. And it's available in two dimensions. So you have vertical and horizontal so you can get uh, two dimensions of diffusion in your room. How does it work? Let's talk about that. It's a series of wells or troughs with horizontal dividers in it. We've all seen these uh, examples of these. This is a P7 right here. So it's based on prime seven, like we discussed. It has actually more than six. We took out the end wells because it's not really necessary. It's not audible. It's just a flat surface for a reflection anyway. So our first well depth starts at one inch. The next well depth is four. The middle two are two inches, four and one. So the series kind of repeats itself, runs one way in the beginning and then repeats itself in the end. Okay, these numbers were derived by using that formula that we talked about and, and getting residuals, which we'll discuss in another video that's more uh, math related. Each one of these well depths is based on quarter wavelength rule, and we'll talk about quarter wavelength rule in another video. So each one of these well depths is based on quarter wavelength rule. The distance across or the horizontal dimension is half wavelength. So let's just stick with the vertical ones for right now and, and look at the quarter wave rule. So our first well is one inch times four because it's 25%, remember, quarter wavelength. So that gives us a total wavelength of four inches. We want to find what frequency that is at. Speed of sound, let's just call it 1132 feet per second. So we have to change our inches to feet. It's a third of a foot about 3,400 cycles. So this one inch depth is standard on quadra quadratic diffusers for the end uh, wells and therefore our quadratic diffuser really will have an upper limit of around 3,400 cycles. Now we'll go the other way. We can all, always uh, go lower. We can go down to even 80 cycles. The wells obviously get very deep. You can have uh, a prime 43 diffuser with a 41 inch well depth. So you could have a lot of uh, uh, distance and a lot of space uh, to, that these uh, devices can take up. This particular one obviously is about four and a half inches deep. So that's our top frequency and then we we get the same calculations here uh, running uh, for these. Okay, I went ahead and run the calculations for us so we don't have to spend the time doing it. 3385, as we worked through on our first example on the uh, end wells. The next well at 4 inches, 847, 1691 for the middle, and then 847 repeating. So what's our bottom? Our bottom is 847, and our top is 3385. 
So that's the frequency response of the diffuser. Predictable, consistent. So you know what you're working with. So obviously frequencies um, that are uh, higher than this will be diffused also. This is kind of our upper limit for each well. So keep that in mind as you're working through this. So we have a, a curve that starts at 847 for diffusion. It ends at 3385. What is that range right there? Well, that's right in our middle range. It's actually the high middle range. So very important. It adds a lot of space, a lot of dimensions uh, to our presentation. So I'm going to go uh, out into the studio and bring one in and we'll look at uh, a real one in person. Okay, here's our Prime 7 base quadratic diffuser that we were just discussing. You can see the series of wells. Here's our first well that's the 1 and then our second one is the deep one which is the 4. The middle two are two, repeating sequence again at four and one. So this is what a quadratic diffuser looks like. When you position them vertically like this in a room, you get a horizontal diffusion. Sound energy enters the diffuser and then spreads out in this fan-like array, 180 degree array. So it, it doesn't reduce any amplitude, it doesn't take any energy away from the signal, and it doesn't change the time signature. It just takes that reflection and spreads it out in a nice 180 degree array. And it's amazing what that sounds like. And if you ever haven't heard it, you really should. If you change the diffuser's orientation and you put it horizontally, then you diffuse vertically. So there's an inverse relationship between position of the product and the performance. Okay, so Horizontally, we get a vertical diffusion. So with vertical and horizontal, you get two dimensions of, of possible three within your room. So very, very important tool, predictable and consistent. Those are the two words I like to use for it. And if you've never heard a room with diffusion, especially quadratic, you just got to. I mean, you're just, you're missing out on such an important part of uh, musical presentation in small rooms. It can, well done and positioned correctly, it can take a small room and make it sound two to three times larger. If you enjoyed today's you. video, if you did, give me a thumbs up so I know that it had value to you. And please, if you have any questions, leave them in the comment section and I'll be more than happy to answer them for you. Alternatively, if there are other topics that you wish to discuss, discuss or see discussed in a video presentation, Send me a, an email, info at acousticfields.com, and uh, we'll get them on our list and, and get them done for you. I release a new uh, video about every week, so stay tuned to our YouTube channel and keep uh, updated on our new videos.